Hey, welcome back to another video. Right now, Nice Game is heading to uh, the uh, Kunta Kinte Island, and you can see uh, the Nice Game team getting into the boat right there with the captain and the tour guide who's going to be taking us around and telling us about or more about the Kunta Kinte Island. Yeah. So, we are entertaining you. We'll be um, educating you about or more about this. Uh, I think that's the one over there, right? Yeah. Okay, so you can see it right from the from the distance, and it's gonna take us about 15 minutes to get to the island. So I hope you're gonna be enjoying this video. Yeah. So yeah. Sarah, let's jump into the boat. Right? <laughs> Is it? Yeah. Okay, yeah. welcome on board uh, with uh, Lucky Child and uh, on behalf of Apache and the group with Lucky Child. Nice gamble, we have yeah. just taken a boat from the village of Albreda going to the island of Kunta Kinte. I'm um, welcoming Nice Gambia on board of Jabba One. I hope we landed on the island of Kunta Kinte with Lucky Child. Yeah, man. I want to big up this young, talented Gambian who come out with this knowledge yeah, to man. promote the Gambia tourism and and part of Kunta Kinte. Yeah, uh, this is the River Gambia. You can see the River Gambia got the sources all the way from Futa Jalon Island, which empty itself in Senegal and comes to the Gambia. River Gambia is with uh, 1,200 creeks on the River Gambia. Many people think it's a sea, but it's still a river. It's a river. And the River Gambia is with salt water, mm -hmm. vegetable with mangrove swamps, very green and fertile. This is where our ancestors say bye to Africa, and they were taken to the New World in America. in America. So today, I am very proud to be with Lucky Child and the crew and Apache. Yeah, Big up this group, please. Yeah. We are going to the island of Kunta Kinte. Yeah, and my man. name is Dudu. I'm welcoming everyone on board today. It's very sad. You can see it's three sea miles away from the mainland of Albreda. And the island is 30 kilometers from the mouth of the river Gambia, which is in the middle of the river. So our ancestors, they took a lot of challenge to swim all the way from there to touch the freedom flagpole there. So we have to say a bravo to Kunta Kinte, yeah, who man. actually was taken to America on the 6th of September. And he was taken to America with a, a captain called David, with a boat known as Lot Lagoon. He's taken to America. Thank you very much. I welcome everyone on board with Lucky, Lucky Child. Child. Big up. Lucky Child, Lucky man. Child, what do you have to say on this trip whilst yeah. we are visiting a very sad place where our ancestors were we taken here, please. Man. Yeah, man, right now, um, I once visited there way back long time since I was a child, and here is the second time visiting the place. So um, what I have for you people right here, and um, we got to move and then we see where they keep our ancestors um, before they will take them to America, an island called um, Kunta Kinte Island. And then right at the moment, um, we got to show you the most um, beautiful place, um, the, play, uh, the real Gambia, nice Gambia, always there to cover you the best, to give you the best um, news. Lucky child, as you can see, we started from Albreda and you can see the river Gambia has divided the Gambia into two. Into two uh, yeah. This is the North Bank and that is the South Bank. But starting from Albreda, you have Albreda, you have Jufre, you have Kembuling. Uh, these are villages I am naming after along the banks of the river Gambia on the north side. The north you have side. Jufre, you have Kembuling, you have Sika, and then you have Same. You have uh, Jurunku, uh, Bafuloto, you have uh, Sika, you have Jurunku, you have Sane, you have Bafuloto, you have uh, Kerewan, up to Badibu. Then on this other side there, you have Banyul, you have Lamelodi, you have Mandinaring. You see, these are villages I am naming after in the south bank of the Gambia. Gambia. Okay. Then from Mandinaring, you have Lamelodi, you have Fonyi. From Fonyi, you have uh, Berefet, Demban, from Demban, you have Paima here, you have Buram, you have Katakor here, then going upward, you have Buyam. Yeah. Then from Buyam, then you are going interior towards Kalaj. Then if you follow this river Gambia, you can go up to Kwaina, you see. 
So, but in South Gambia here, it is more closer going to Senegal, Kasamas, Kafunting than the North Bank here. So this site is more close to Kasamas. So right now here, I am welcoming everyone, the Apache and the group and the Lucky Gambia to the island of Kunta Kinte. It is a very sad moment once we step foot on the island of Kunta Kinte. First, I have to jump on the mouth of these cannons here. Uh, this is the guard post of the island here. Very sad, as you can see, the location of this island, very interesting. I wish this was a low tide in the Gambia, six hours low tide, six hours full tide. If this was a low tide, we would have walked around the island. If Gambia knows we have one of the richest culture and the richest history in the Gambia because of this island of Kunta Kinte. But we don't know how to respect our values. These are a very important values heritage site on the site of history. This is three times bigger than this size of the island you can see. This was comparing to a small mini Gambian village before. But it's very sad Apache and the group and lucky child of the Gambia. Yeah. The river Gambia is taking our island. It is coming smaller and smaller. I believe in 20 years time, although this is nature, I know it won't disappear everything, but it will become very small, actually. The river Gambia is located at a very right position and this island is a, one of the most important islands we have in the River Gambia. This is where our ancestors were taken. Once you are here, a lucky child of Gambia, sometimes what I do feel, I feel a lot of people on this island. A lot of life has gone under this island. Portuguese people start exploring this island in 1456. Before their arrival on this island, the local name of this island was called San Domingo Joyo. That's how Mandinka calls it. San Domingo is a human, is, a, is somebody from this small village called Sika. This is where they call Sika Kunto. You see that big baobab tree there? That's where they call Sika Kunto. He's a fisherman. When he fish in this river Gambia, if he's tired, this is where he uses as his resting point. They call it San Domingo Joyo. So the island was named after him. after him. When the Portuguese people were here, 1456, they named this island Andrew Island. It was not called James, it was called Andrew Island. During their tenure or their arrival here, 1456, there was no building on this island here. The Portuguese people come and find this island in the middle of the river Gambia, which is three times bigger than the size we are seeing here. And come here first before we go. Uh, we put this boat here. We want to tell you what important of the island is, how the island was so important. And this is the river Gambia. This is around Kololi, Senegambia. This is the mouth of the river. Tourists coming here, this map is directing them. When you cross with the ferry to the other side, that's Bara. You drive with your safari. This is Albreda where we left those safari cars there, uh, at our office there. And this is Fort James Island. So this is the map we are trying to show. Once you follow this river Gambia, it is very wide and bigger in the mouth. The river is bigger than the country. Three times, this is why river Gambia is important. If you go up to Georgetown from the south, not to the south, the river Gambia is divided into two. This part is salt water, that part is fresh water. Okay. That's where you can spot hippos. That's where we used to take the tourists. You see, now coming here, it is trying to tell you on the platform here, we are just showing you the example of the island, how the island used to be bigger before. So this is the mouth of the island. This is where we are right moment. This is the main gate of the island. Now, in the museum, you see, this is the governor house. This is the governor kitchen. This is the women's slave house. This is the men's slave house. But it's unfortunate. All this side of the island is in the water now. So we're trying to show you this is what we are left with the island. That is what is behind me there. So during the arrival of the Portuguese here, the one of their sailors died on the island here. It is the first time of a white man coming to Africa. 
and the island was called Andrew Island. But during their stay here, there was no building on this island, Lucky Child. It is just an empty flat land like this. These baobab trees were not here. All what you see is bushy with mangrove swamps and everything. So, in 1651, the island was contracted by Duke of Corland. They built the fort on the island. It's the Duke of Corland they contracted and built the fort on the island. And all what they built is not with cement, but oyster cells were pounded with our local women. Could you believe our Africans were used to do the domestic labor work? And wonder, ask yourself, what tools do they uh, use? At that time, there was no technology. Our forefathers will use tools to cut this, label them to be like bricks. So our people suffered a lot from the white people. It's enough, it's enough. It's enough. 1651. Never again. Never again. 1661, the English people came with our heavy weapons, cannons like this, bombard everything and label it, and they rebuilt it in 1651. In 1681, the French people attacked. French were not succeeded on the island here. And they give them a piece of land in Albreda. That's why they build that warehouse. It's the building you are telling yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. French started bringing goods like tobacco, coffees, and rums. And they exchanged them with things, with, things. with, slaves. with slaves. In 1672, was attacked. William Way a war here. And then he was not succeeded. 1708, the Spanish people attacked the island. You see, 1726, a gunpowder magazine explode on this store here, boom. This is why you cannot see the roofs on the island now, lucky child. That's why you have all this damage. It was too flat before. Yes. So slavery run for 400 years on this island and in Africa as well, lucky child. After a while, when James Somerset escaped a black man to be free in the plantation of Liverpool, and then Thomas Clarkson become to be a champion white man to say slavery had to stop in 1807. He was not succeeded and he was not recommended by the uh, House of Parliament in the UK. He was supported with Graham Wilbersap, you see. And then they stopped slavery in 1807. Slaves were here, 93 of them, they were asked lucky child to swim by their freedom to go and touch that pole they can but nobody make it, they all drown in the river Gambia here. Here we face here was built as water cistern. This is what you call cistern tanks. It was wondering where could they have a fresh water on the island here. They built this, they have water from the rainfall water. These were all covered before with aluminium. Plus it very nice. They got water from the rainfall for two rain, three rain. They used that rain for purpose of their drinking and their to wash their clothes and take sour. So this island was mainly built of torturing slaves. It's like taking their mind, stopping them rebellion against the white people. That's why they tortured them here for two weeks. From here, they take them not directly to America, but they take them to Gore Island where they can access the mouth of Atlantic and then take them to America. Where we are entering, it's one of the dangerous prisons we have on the island here. You could imagine an unbelievable, I'm telling you a real story. 20 humans will stuff here, black people. They stand on their feet like that for two good weeks, for a night. You couldn't believe the chain we seen in the museum. That was the long chain where it was connected. That's where Kunta was hung like that, the lucky child. Kunta is brave. Let's say thank God to Kunta Kinte today. That's where the chain is from, my brother. He That's where they like hook Kunta Kinte like that. Weeks. For two good weeks consecutively with 20 people. Yes. Believe me. This door, window were open personally. They drunk their alcohol outside the white people here. Enjoy our black people here, our forefathers. They throw food for them. It is like a survival of fittest. Believe me. They do everything, toilet and everything in this. You see, you could know that uh, black people, they should thank God. We are very strong, strong actually. This is why I always advise people, especially from diaspora, hey, care each other, love each other in Europe. Stop killing each other. Don't be enemies. Yes. Know your value. 
You are from Africa, you are the ancestors. These people taking their stolen children from Africa. Believe me. So they have to know their value, their integrity. In America, Europe, wherever they come from, let them care each other. It's the white people who make divide and rule from us. We hate each other. They come to Africa, loot our golds and diamonds, take them. Make us busy in war. Where we are going is the back of the island. This is where you call the slave yard. This slave yard, if you come here, you will see why these stones are circled. You know why? They bring all the slaves out here. You see where we left the boat there? That is not the normal bridge. The original bridge was built here. You come, you will even see it with your steel runways, like motorways built in England. It is still there. And here, let me show you here, Paul. This is where they assemble all the slaves now. They take out all their clothes on their body, both women and children and men. Now, this is where they do that branding you see in the museum. You could believe if they realize me and Lucky, we are from the same mother and father, or we are from the same family. They don't want to speak our language in Europe or in the Brazil or in the plantation. They take you to America, they take me to Europe and take my younger brother to Brazil. They divide and rule us. Divide and rule. This is why I tell you, these black people, they have to do DNA blood tests to know where they come from. This is where the original bridge of the island was built before. You see, you still see the runways like the motorways in England. When the ship come from Senegal, the ship have to turn to that angle and they will bring all the slaves here. They will line up them, put them on ship and they say last bye to Africa. They never come back again. So this is where the original bridge used to be. You see, touch it and feel it. This is, uh, I say, thank God uh, the ancestors cannot make it, but the children of today have to make it, you see. So this is why it's important to be here. We be as a flag bearer to give a powerful message. Our ancestors cannot make it, but we are here for them as a flag bearers. Yeah. The stolen children from our diaspora are coming back today. today. So let's thank God. The trees you've seen, uh, this is uh, many Gambians have to learn today, has from today. These are not the original trees in the Gambia. They are not indigenous trees. They are all from a country called Madagascar. They are brought from Europeans here in this, uh, in this country here. You see, they can live for centuries. They are storage of trees. They are storage of water. You see, the roots, they grow about uh, 100 feet deep in the, in, the in the ground. That's why when they fell down, they can still survive. And these are what you call white mangrove swamps. White mangrove swamps are different from the other mangrove swamps you see along the beach. White mangrove swamps survive from the fresh water. You see, when you cut them in their stem, you'll see a fresh water if you drink it. The mangrove. Yeah, that's why there are leaves. If you look the other mangroves at the, around the beach, exactly. they are different. Yes, These uh, leaves are more white. Those ones are fertile green. So those ones, you can use their leaves to make Thai and diabetics, you see. So this one, they store a rainwater in their stem. We call them a white mangrove swamps, you see. So you see this water, this island is getting smaller and smaller. If you look and observe all those things you see when the water moves, these are cannons lying down. The water is taking the island, believe me. So this island used to be very big at a time. So we are going to a place where one of the councillors of the island was living. Uh, they have about eight members uh, of the island, 33 writers and 32 slave castles on this island here. But in this middle part, no black was exactly living here. Yeah, we'll go there, you see. So this part here is one of the councillor room. You wouldn't imagine, think unconscious, Actually, you see, believe me, how could one councillor will be living in this bigger room like this? And whilst you're putting 20 people in that prison because of the color. So the color is not important when you're talking about history. I believe we all have red blood in our veins. Yeah, so it yeah. doesn't matter you are Jamaican, you are American, you are black. We are all uh, children of God. Whenever you see an image of a black, you see an image of a white man. So here is where 
Andrew was buried. Andrew who first landed on this island here, 1456, after his death here because of malaria, he was lying down here, they buried him. They call it Andrew Island. When the English people took the island 1661, because King James II, they changed the name and say James Island. So if I want to understand, like all this place, this building, nobody was living here. Andrew was the one. Andrew was the one occupied in here. This is why they said the governor room. All the black Africans were on the side of the island. When we climb on the tower there, you will see the 32 castles around the island where African ancestors were being stopped there. You see. So, but thank God, Michael Jackson on the 6th of February uh, 2011, German Jackson, the brother, came here, who changed the name. That's why he passed that boat there and said, Kunta Kinte Island now. So we get a peace of mind. So here was used as a Amory Center. This is where they keep their food. This is where they keep their guns and everything. I wish you have someone in England, a friend, tell him, uh, or call him and said, visit the Liverpool Museum in England. You'll know the reason of it. A gunpowder explodes here and kill 11 white English soldiers on this uh, sentry room. And the dead bodies of those white people were taken to the Liverpool Museum and they kept it in England. See how corrupt is the white people because it's their history and their people, you see. So, uh, sometimes I used to bring a school kids here on excursion like we're doing and they do want to climb on the walls and I'm advising them it's old now so let them not climb that's why I put danger in other places some boats were even spoiled you know and this place was used as a dining room dining room so this place was used as an administration center whenever they wake up every morning they will bring all the slaves assemble them here if you don't want to go with their command or do a domestic work they just take you in one of the prison and keep you there so this is why this administration center was used there was a time in fact we passed a boat here but the rain was it all you know So this, you may see this is maybe the smallest cannon in the island here. It's the first cannon they have uh, ever tested on the island and fire it and see the range and the powerful of the cannon on the island. This is why it has been small. It's the first cannon they have brought on the island here and they fire it, you see. So it's one of the smallest cannon on the island, you see. An interesting thing on the island, you see, Maybe you see that mark, 717 on that, yeah, 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 yeah. you see, Seven. baobabs are trees in the Gambia. They can survive for a long time. This uh, cannon, one of the cannon was here before, but they fired the cannon and it caught one of the branch on that tree and it fell down. It's still surviving. So they put the number of the cannon, 717 there, you see. So these trees, are very, very important in the Gambia. They are storage of water. Even when you cut one of the branch, it fell down, they still survive, you see. So this is a place where we call the Tower of the Island. And this cannon was one of the powerful cannon they brought on this island. It's 20 ton cannons when you wait. It's 750 meters when you fire it into the water, you see. So it is a very, very important place we are visiting now. And this is uh, our last point of uh, visiting on the island here. But uh, if you look at this cannon, if you look on the history book, in fact, you will see the flag. Uh, when the English people are leaving this island, 1829, they abandoned leave this island and they went and captured Banjul. That's why Banjul was called Batos before in our history. It was named Batos after Batos because they put their Union Jack flag here. This is a 20-ton cannon. When you wait, it's a 24-pounder cannon, you see. 750 meters, the range and powerful of the cannon when you fire it into the water. This is put here, is to attack their enemies coming through the mouth of the River Gambia. When they see a ship coming, they think it's a Spanish or any other enemies attacking them, they fire this cannon. This used to be not the original one. It used to be a wooden one before. It is the tower of the island. This is what gives a signal to the island at night to show the ships when they are passing. If you look at on this boat, this is the whole situation of the island. You see, they have 33 soldiers on the island and eight militaries, 13 writers and 20 artists on the island, and 32 
two castles, slave castles. These are the slave castles around the island where they put slaves on the But you see, we are telling you all this is like in the water. So this was the day they leave the island, 18, 1829, and they put their Union Jack flag here. And they went and captured Banyul, uh, the city, and they call it Batos. You see, then uh, one of the governor was ruling Georgetown. The British people named it Georgetown. And they, when they cases some slaves on that island there, they scattered. They call it Janjambure, Ijanjantale. Okay. You see, Jambure. then, Jambure. yes, then when the English people come and the governor said, Imankati, those slaves, because they cannot capture them, they have no choice. They said, Imankati, that's what brings the name of Makati. Makati. That's why you have Janjambure Makati, Georgetown. You see. <laughs> and then in the Gambia here, we have few islands which are inhabited, like like Banjul Island uh, is inhabited, Georgetown is inhabited, but Jinek Island where we call Paradise Island, that's where yeah, they right. grow this cannabis for free because their land is not fertile to grow any other crop. That's why Gambia government gave them that priority to grow that uh, cannabis in Jinek Island, you see. So I thank you everyone on this uh, group uh, with me, a um, young talented uh, Gambian. Uh, and then Apache, yes. and I would like to actually ask you uh, yes. <laughs> what powerful message actually, because I've been coming here a lot of time with uh, people, some will make documentary out of my speech, in fact, and take it to Europe, and then if in the Gambia government, and I come here with a lot of prominent people like Sisla, Colossi, Frankie yes, Paul, yes. you know, Morgan family. So I would like just to give you a short uh, interview, what uh, can, what powerful message actually will you have to deliver also to the Gambia government or to the youth of Gambia uh, to prevent this island or to put a best use of this island and the big history we have, uh, a young talented uh, Gambian and the uh, Apache. <laughs> and the crew. Um, what I learned from your topic, um, uh, um, your explaining here, right, um, is uh, um, what I see, um, our government or African government, um, we have to um, focus um, to develop um, our own cultural places um, whereby uh, it will make our own people to repatriate to um, Zion. Um, Zion, what I mean by Zion is Africa, the motherland, the sweet land, um, um, the land um, um, which is belongs for um, Africans and then um, my advice to our government um, they need to um, focus and then invest back um, to um, our um, um, Kunta Kinte Island because we are losing the island and then from here my blood run cold definitely and then um, I just hold my tears but um, um, my tears um, it's about to fall down on the ground but um, then at um, the same time, um, my people out there in America um, who, who never know where they come from or where they belong from, um, start researching from day to day um, to know um, your roots, your culture, because if you know your roots, you will know your culture. Yeah. And then um, um, I have to call up all Africans who are out there, diaspora, um, that um, Africa is blank for the African people, no matter um, um, either you are Jola or a Manding or a Fuller or a Siri. Um, we are all Africans and uh, we are all black people. Um, in Africa, we said no black supremacy and white supremacy. And then um, I have to say um, that um, the people, them have lost them culture. Money make them act like a vulture. Yeah, is the creator who owns each and every future. I have a question to ask. You yeah, listen to the boss. Where is the unity in this society? Evil and bad are the majority. We have to do good. Good for law now your cemetery. Work out free on your own property. The bad one and them are block them on an opportunity. True vanity. Always give charity to the community. Respect the humanity. And try to keep the property. Build more factory. Everybody have to try and speak the truth. Not to be rude. Believe in the oneness of the most high. Everything will be cool. Babylon them are fool. They want to rule. Why not then create proper jobs and schools, everything in cold, cause nobody them a do it and then sell out, that's why them now have no reward, 
this is nice Gambia, this is best Gambia, this is beautiful Gambia. We call it nice Gambia, but we are nice Africa. Ready from here, we're gonna move around to Senegal, all over Africa, and then we will bring you best after rest. We live in the Gambia and others follow. So yeah. tell them something. So, yeah, you know, before you close up the video, uh, something happened, you know. I came here, let's say, about uh, eight years ago, yeah? But I was a young kid, so this man was explaining. I think we found another man here who was explaining this history. But I wasn't able to feel this this history, you know, because uh, I was, yeah, I was young and my brain wasn't mature enough to capture all those things. All what I, you know, came here was to enjoy, have fun and go back and tell my parents, wow, I visited this place, I entered inside a But now I am here, you know, this thing really touched me. Now is the time I am feeling this place. I am feeling the pain that my pe I can see my great grandparents were, you know, we are going through. Imagine how can you put people, you know, in a, in a place that you know that even ships can't be in that place. Yeah. Even you, you, if you store certain things within two weeks, they will, you know, I, I can say within a week, the thing will get spoiled. So how can you take those amount of people and put them in a, that small place? You know, this thing, my blood really, really, really run cold, as Lucky Child always say. So if you know that you are out there and you are having this color, please, as the man said, go and do it. Is it a DNA, DNA blood, blood test? test. Yeah. And know, know where, where you, you come from. Come from, yeah. So this is the Gambia. Make sure you click that subscribe button, like it, share it to your friends and family. This man is, I could say, you know, his explanation really moved me. You know, I was behind the camera. I was behind the camera, yo. I was holding the camera. You see, if you are watching the video, you realize that the video sometimes is not focusing. This is because I was listening to what was going on. You see, so can you please give them your number in case someone is out there and you know he want uh, to come here? Before and he want I to... give them my number, let me revise back uh, like what you say about DNA blood test and touch a little bit about Kunta Kinte. I didn't tell you that much story about mm. Kunta, uh, why Kunta was being mentioned today, and uh, remember when. Kunta, how Kunta was captured in Africa is all about to love unity and to be a real Africans, like he said. Uh, remember, I told you, Kunta was born in 1750 in the village of Jufure. And you remember in our African history, where I remember even myself, where I used to be uh, taken to the bush circumcised when I was uh, 19 years in our real culture. This is why we said let's love our culture and culture. let it not be taken by the Western yeah. people. Yes. I remember they used to yes. gather to us on the one big tree yes. whereby everybody was done culture. manual and whatsoever. Mm -hmm. uh, remember this is where Kunta get the name title of Kunta Ikinte. In fact, he's a warrior. He's a warrior. He's a warrior. That's why they call him Kunta Kinte. You can look the whole Gambia. Some people will name, uh, make their their name Kunta Kinte just to be nickname or funny but it's not easy to be fine in the Gambia like Kunta Kinte. Uh, whenever he went on wrestling his back never touched ground, ground. and during the circumcision period in fact according to our history he is the one who never cried out of 50, 150 children in Jufre whereby they were taken under one big silk cap of tree where they were circumcised and Omoro Kinte you see, his brother was named after their father also, Omoro Kinte. He was wow. supposed to face the same challenge. Kunta was just uh, trying to go out to the jungle to look out for drum for... Okay, go for one minute and then we close. Again. Okay, uh, to look for drum to entertain him, not to cry the brother. That's where he saw these white people in the jungle here. And they captured him when they brought him here. That is the final period where the family see him. It's the friends who run back and said to Omoro Kinte, their father, oh, Kunta Kinte was spotted by white people in the jungle and he was taken to the island of San Domingo. And that's where they stopped seeing Kunta Kinte. He, they took him to Annapolis in Virginia, where they sold him to Tomley in America. Tomley is the plantation master, but he tried to escape from Tomley time to time. That's where they chop one of his right feet. And then he was no more valuable slave. But thank God, Fanta was an African slave who changed his name to Bell. You see? So that Fanta actually was the one who was trying to help Kunta Kinte in the plantation until they got married and they got a child called Kissy. That Kissy was the one Tomley himself raped and they got Chicken George. That Chicken George was the one who married in America and they got Cynthia. Cynthia is the mother of Bartha. Bartha was the mother of Simon. Simon was the father of Alex Silly, the African-American. We found a picture in the museum there. Yeah. He's the one who do DNA blood tests and do 13 good uh, research. Uh, 
Captain Guti is for side member until he went to Ghana, Almina Castle, where he found Ibu Mange, is the first Gambian who Gambia government sent on the agriculture for study, who directed Kunta Hitelim, go to the Gambia. That's why Gambia get that name, the Gambia. That's the Gambia. what the way of Gambia. That's yeah. why the THE, if you write a letter to me, if you're in America, you don't put THE, the letter goes to Zambia. So Alex Eli came here in 1967 and write this book of fruit. That's why Jufre and Abel is famous like this today. Thank you very much. And uh, once more, I give you my number. My number is 7627216. 7627216. My Q cell number is 3979908. Thank you very much, Mr. My name is Mr. Dudu Mendy on behalf of a lucky child with Apache and the group, yeah, the crew. Thank Thank you, yes, young I talented in Albadar, Jufre, Kunta, Kinta Island. One love, one heart, let's get together, let's feel all right. Kanu killing, Ngani killing, Alim Mbe, Natara Nyokang, Fonza Sewo. Africa Mundati and the Senang War. Thank you. Don't forget to watch and subscribe. subscribe. Like it and basically share it to friends and family. Make sure each and every Gambian or each and every African, uh, African American or African European or African Asian subscribe and repatriate to Africa, the motherland, the sweet land, mama land. Especially the Gambia when coming, dial up his number. Make sure he knows that you are coming. Forward always. We represent the red, white, blue, white, green to the four corners of the world. For the Gambia, motherland, we stand for work and pray that all may live in big unity, freedom in Gambia, peace and love each and every day you sleep and wake up. Check it out.